Moin. Hi and welcome to Watch and Work. Watch and Work is Contitech's service video series for automotive mechanics. In them you'll learn how to change timing belts on a wide range of vehicle engines, simply, safely and quickly. These videos show the key working steps for workshop pros. They might take a few minutes, but it's worth staying with them. You'll more than make up this time later on. My name is Stefan Meyer, by the way, and I'll show you a different engine in each video. OK, let's go inside. Today I have here an engine from a Skoda Octavia. It's a 2002 1.9-liter 81-kilowatt TDI engine with engine code ASV. The kit we need for this engine is this CT1044WP1. For this engine we also use our VD1089 torsional vibration damper with the MS17 fitting kit. Toolbox V01 contains the special tools required. Before you can set this engine to TDC, you first have to remove the cylinder head cover. Then turn the engine in the normal direction of rotation until a mark is aligned on the crankshaft. After that, insert the locking pin in the fuel injection pump and, in addition, a special locking tool in the camshaft at the rear. Next, you also have to loosen the fuel injection pump sprocket. To do so, remove the locking tool again and loosen the three bolts using a counter hold. Once you've set the timing gear correctly, lock the fuel pump again and release the tension in the timing belt via the tension pulley nut. After removing the timing belt, please remove the straight edge from the camshaft at the top and loosen the camshaft sprocket. To remove the camshaft sprocket, we need a puller in order to detach it from the cone. Now you can set about changing the components. You'll find all the parts you need for this in the kit. When fitting the new tensioning pulley, note that there is a lug here. This lug has to be inserted right into the plastic guard at the back here. You've now fitted the new components. The next step is to fit the timing belt. Before doing so, adjust the fuel injection pump sprocket such that it's positioned in the center of the slots. Now you've fitted the timing belt starting at the crankshaft and continuing counterclockwise round the fuel injection pump sprocket and finishing at the camshaft sprocket, which you can fit back in place together with the timing belt. The timing belt and the camshaft sprocket are now fitted again. Hand tighten the camshaft sprocket bolt initially. This will be fully tightened later using a wrench after tensioning the timing belt. To tension the timing belt, locate the face pin spanner wrench in the tensioning pulley eccentric and tension the eccentric clockwise until the notch and the groove on the tensioning pulley are aligned. Now remove all the locking tools. Then tighten the camshaft sprocket and the three fuel injection pump bolts using a wrench. After that, turn the engine over through two revolutions and check the timing gear again. If you've set everything correctly, you can fit the timing belt guard again and then install the vibration damper. When fitting the vibration damper, you need to note the correct fitting position. On the vibration damper, there are four bores, one of which is slightly larger, and we also have a small cam there at the bottom on the crankshaft sprocket. To fit the part correctly, the large bore must be aligned with the cam, otherwise the crankshaft sprocket could wobble. OK, you're almost there. You now just have to complete the engine. Please follow the manufacturer's specifications carefully, especially the torques. Remember, take it gently. Before you get the car back on the road, bear our quality stamp in mind. Place our change sticker in a clearly visible location in the engine compartment, so the customer can see that you've installed a quality product.